What's up, everybody, and welcome to the double digit episode of the Swolecast. It is week 10. I cannot believe we are 10 weeks in already. Um, Pete, I want to start with you. How are you doing 10 weeks in? Because you were like, you're you're everywhere. You're doing everything. You're on, you have like eight different shows. You've got a helping with a newsletter. Obviously, the Swole Cast would takes up a ton, a ton of time. Like, <laughs> how are you doing 10 weeks into the season? Well, I was doing good until I logged on and saw that you're encroaching on my millennial lighting here on the show. Can we talk about uh, the upgrades over here? Because I'm I'm shook. Oh, really? You noticed uh, you noticed the lighting? That's funny. I need to um, notice that. Wow. Wow. You know, I'm feeling kind of like edgy, kind of pink. But if I get to be kind of blue, I can do like the the Pete. I've got um, shout out to the Hugh Phillips Hugh Blooms, two of them. I'll go. I'll go with a little blue to match you. So you you are notorious of taking credit for your friends' accomplishments. Are you going to give me credit for being the direct inspiration for your new lighting here in your studio? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll give you some credit, but I also want to go back to the old FI days, the old Fantasy Insider days. I was the first one in the industry that had blue lights behind me. First one. I will pull up some screenshots and show you. First optimizer, first mood lighting. I mean, you are truly a trailblazer. And look where I am, just <laughs> reaping the benefits of all that. Uh, Davis, you, uh, you kind of got thrown under the bus yesterday with the picture of... Um, you and my my daughter Kara the first time y'all it, like that was legit the first time you met mm -hmm. and um you had nothing to do with her I just I'm not a big kid guy more of a dog guy <laughs> really you, you, you tried you to kill my dog much, yeah you didn't interact <laughs> much with David's uh, dog we did I hung out with your dog the whole time because Laffy and I smoked cigarettes on your back porch the entire trip all right speaking of kids the verge of death Speaking of kids, Subtle, how are you doing? No, I'm great. have a lot of energy. I, I said it yeah. pre-show. I'm trying to make it more enthusiastic when I say it, though. I'm, You know what? I'm, I'm re-energized. It's week 10, yeah. but I'm, I'm ready to kick some ass. Every take, just ask it like a question, and, uh, and you're good. There you go. So let's, let's start out. We'll get into some other shenanigans. Let's start out, though, with the, the question of the week. Mike Davis. Is he a free square or is he a fade? Because it certainly feels like it might be a, a blender week. And by a blender week, Davis, play whoever what do you I mean? Want. Play whoever you want. Just put, put, don't fade Mike Davis. Put it and just play whoever you want. Any player who's over 50% owned in tournaments has to be a bad play. Play whoever you want, except for Mike Davis. Thank you, Blender. <laughs> Peter, do you have anything to add to that? I just, as long as you're correlating, it, it doesn't even matter. Like, just run it. you want to play Antonio Brown? Play Antonio Brown. You want to play Rob Gronkowski? Play Rob Gronkowski. It doesn't matter. That was like an angry blender, but I like it. Oh, Blender's always angry, man. It's like Blender, then Blender HD. Um, <laughs> all right, but Tuttle. From, from, Did you know a Blender she... HD actually means like Blender Head? Blender Head. Did yeah. not know that one. Blew my mind. No, I didn't know it either. I thought it meant like high def, which oh, that's what I, I always too. questioned, but whatever. Uh, Mike Davis, Tuttle. Free square or nah? Or is it cash versus GPP? Yeah, I think uh, Mike Davis is a <laughs> pretty good play this week. I mean, I think I'm going to have him in um, my Thunderdome lineup. Mm -hmm. With you got to win this week, Mo. You gotta, you gotta win this week. <laughs> oh man! Pull Did, I think, hey, yeah, we need. We've all now done an impression. What impression should we have Kitchen do to round this out? Kitchen should do an impression of Overzet. I've never seen him do that one. I've seen him obviously do me a million times. He's done Tuttle. I want to have. I want to see Kitchen doing Overzet. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's what you have to think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't, even, yeah, you gotta I don't get, know. You got to you gotta get close. You got to get. How would, do I, I do don't know this? how to do an over that one. <laughs> yeah, like you do it like your, your hands sometimes. Uh, but you, 
It depends on if you're like excited or if you're in a bit or if like you faded Dalvin Cook last week, then it's just like, I am Peter Overs that and this is this is I can't what believe you're you were upset at me for playing the big dog. I thought you would be proud of me. Oh no, last week was a January and and and, and AJ Brown game, bro. Come January on, is getting cucked by Anthony Ferguson. Yeah, John, January, <laughs> January, we no. gotta leave him in the past, he, bro. He got there last week, and that's all that matters. Um so Mike Davis, yay or nay Davis? Yeah, I think my plan right now is that I'll be playing him in like all my single entry in three max teams. Uh, be- and the, the reason why that is, is I tend to play so aggressively with stacks and like double bring backs that it's very hard for me to imagine having a problem with cumulative ownership on my teams, even with Mike Davis on, you know, 60 to 70% of rosters. So I tend to not sweat it. Um, if in MME though, something I think is interesting would be to go underweight on him or fade him and then only allow wide receivers in your flex. So you have a 150 run of wide receivers. Cause if I was to offer you right now a bet, I get Mike Davis, you get every wide receiver who's in play under 4k who gets the highest points. You would take the, you'd snap, take the wide receivers at even money. So I, I kind of, I kind of like that idea of, wheeling around wide receivers in the flex and then fading Mike Davis who like let's be real can get 13 here pretty easily I think if he doesn't score a touchdown now if he scores a touchdown I would almost guarantee he is in all of the optimal lineups well you remember like earlier this season where like you you can't have three Panthers in your lineup in your cash game lineup if you can I don't think we have to sweat that this week yeah. All right. Uh, as far as the other overview stuff, let's go to Overzet's overview week 10. Overzet, what do you got? Yeah, it's the classic segment. You want it and you get it. It is the Overzet <laughs> overview of the week. <laughs> I I do think like Mike Davis projects so well. Uh, and the next closest guy as far as points per dollar is Chase Edmonds. And now we have Kenyon Drake back at practice today. So uh, yeah, running back this week, it seems like the top four or five plays are just very obvious with Duke and Kareem Hunt. Um, I don't know where the interesting plays are going to come from if you get off the board. And then we got a bunch of interesting games again, as far as Carolina, Buffalo is going to catch a lot of ownership, should see a lot of points there. We got the Rams and Seahawks. I don't think people are going to play Metcalf again. I really I don't think, think they are not. either because they, no. Jalen Ramsey, Jaylen dude. Ramsey. <laughs> oh my God. It's like, I keep getting to have my DK Metcalf at 5% owned and it's like keeping me in business. It's beautiful. Yeah. I'm ready. Davis, to jam you were Metcalf spot again. on and you deserve the credit for that. You also um, chastised people from playing Christian McCaffrey last week saying that, why would you play Mike Davis? Well, if you played him, if you played him, you got crushed because he was more expensive than Dalvin cook and had like 30 less points than cook. So I, I, I was think right. he was in the Millie lineup, but uh, I could be yeah, wrong. I, think on he that. Was too. Oh, I don't care. But. Theoretically, though, <laughs> other than that millionaire guy, got, you probably got, got crushed. crushed. Look, that guy couldn't even figure out how to screenshot his lineup to send it to, uh, mm-hmm. to Jeff Manns. No, so. you you 100% needed it because all the running backs were trash last we're week, bad. right? Yeah. Outside yeah. of, uh, Dallin. I think Kay- I, I believe Kalen Blage was the fourth highest scoring running yep. back of the week. Did a single yeah. person roster him in the Millie Maker? <laughs> I mean, we didn't even have him in our projections. Like, we did not even know he was called up off the practice squad. <sighs> and now he gets revenge week. I would, yep. I would guess that 99% of, even the DFS population did not even know that he was on the Chargers squad. I did not like see him with thought, a projection anywhere. Yeah. So that was, man, that was an interesting. That was an not interesting. That in- tilt. I, I gotta say, personally, not that interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, not, not that, really interesting. I, I gotta say, I gotta say, I gotta say, as someone who really needed Justin Jackson to come back in that game, not particularly a, like a fascinating situation. I know, and- after Lockett's game, I just was like looking to hold on. And so when the Justin Jackson news broke, because I didn't have him, I was just, that's when I was like in the chat, just shut. I was just like, shut up. Because I didn't want to be like, yes, now I can mend cash. Dude. I was just letting everyone else tilt, basically. I, uh, I've i actually, I forgot about this, but this is something I wanted to rant about real quick. Go okay. off, King. 
<laughs> Adam Levitan has so many sheep following him that when he said that Justin Jackson got hurt in warmups, not the first play of the game, and then I sent out a t- tweet to Dave, just responding to Davis, just making fun of Davis, typical, typical tweet, saying yeah. he got hurt on the first play of the game. I had like five or six people jump in my mentions. Nope, nope. It was in warmups. Levitan said warmups, 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 warmups. So I think what we need to do Tunnel is, went off. is I think we King. need to bribe Levitan to just tweet misinformation on Sunday morning. Like we need to find a DK, good DK Metcalf has been walking around with uh with a brace on his knee and warm yes. ups. He's not looking great. It has to. We have to do is this it? because I mean he's already he's so already done sheep. that with the with the uh, the Ty Fluke stuff. Like he's already he's already given us that. Also, um, who was it? Will Fuller versus uh, Carson Brown. Brown. Hollywood with, Brown. With Another one. So. Tough scenes for Levitan. Well, Levitan, no, Levitan was on no, Fuller. Levitan versus... was on Fuller, yeah. Yeah. Oh, not tough scenes for Levitan. But I, um, I want to use it to our advantage is what I'm getting at. Yeah, like we've already had that. That's like in the olden days when you had random accounts. Vandal get... chat. Does anyone? Uh, not no, just I mean, Vandal chat, but also. No, Joe Kim Noah. Joe Kim was Noah. That the oh, the dildo Cardinal? tweet. <laughs> that was no, the dildo so, tweet. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yes, he found some dude. The guy had like well, five that's followers. That's when, like, you were. Followers. Yeah, that's when you were searching for stuff, and then you realized awesome. when you looked at his other tweets that this guy wasn't incredible. That, that's what that was. This was the, this was the like wild the wild, days. wild. Yeah, people yeah. just don't awesome. even know, dude. My, this is my favorite thing with Levitan's Twitter is when he wants to venture into dicey territory, and then you can kind of see himself rein himself in. He's like, "Oh shit, I have like 150 thousand followers. I can't just say like <laughs> penis over dick size metric on Twitter." <laughs> Can't get too spicy, Levitan. You're a corporate. Yeah. You're a corporate account now. Right. I love it. Peter saying that on the corporate show. Come on, bro. Oh, this is. I mean, over here at Better <sighs> Collective, we can say whatever dirty no, shit we don't want. Don't say that. <laughs> it's lit. I uh, know. Got to get you guys replaced for a week. Um, if you guys see like one of these guys replaced, it's it's because of an internal suspension. I was gonna say, would that even be a thing? No, a Jes- one show suspension for one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Jes- Jesper would never. All right, um, we have the quarterbacks that we're gonna talk about. We're gonna make our lineup as well. But first, want to wish everyone out there. Happy Veterans Day. We actually have, uh, I think we have quite a bit of veterans that watch the show. This is a, a show that uh, we we kind of mimic. The... Re- really relevant to their interests, I'm sure. Well, I'm anyways. sure they appreciate our very cavalier attitude about literally everything. Uh, Should no, we take a moment I think of they, silence? Or... I think they appreciate it. So love you, vets. You know, you, you know, soccer day loves you. All right. Uh, now let's get to quarterbacks. Peter, who are, you th- who are you throwing it to? Hey, Mason Rudolph in cash kitchen. No, <laughs> no. Kitchen, you, you, your bit was there for you last week with Drew Locke in cash, and you just you didn't take it and at Luton, all. I, Luton too. Yeah, I almost did with with Drew Locke, and boy, talk about a guy who got there. Yeah, Sammy the Reed and Nate Nolan, just these giant fucking fish. I cannot believe they got there in the fourth quarter. Uh, it's like unbelievable. <laughs> hey, I wasn't sorry, just Devin. getting there too. It was like. Like super got like outscored yeah, Russell Wilson smashed. got there. <laughs> so do you do we play Kyler Murray or Russell Wilson every week now? That's I have question. Josh Allen in my cash shell right now, but I, I think the four best quarterback plays of the week are Kyler, Russ, Josh Allen, and Goof. I was waiting for the Derek Carr take from uh from Davis. He is in all the optimals at DR right now, but I don't think I have the I don't think I have the intestinal fortitude to run that one out it just seems like it seems like if you are taking a quarterback who projects for like under like if he can't run you are like literally giving up like four points to everyone else like it's it's just it's a it's a nightmare to not play running quarterback mason rudolph though on DraftKings is 4.1k if this, Big Ben does not like, get cleared on Saturday. Okay, this is like the Chase Daniel. It's exactly the Chase Daniel situation, right? Because it was a high – It was he didn't even get it. Roethlisberger doesn't even have COVID. It was just like a person directly. Yeah, next I to agree, him. though. I agree. It's the exact same thing. Everybody was like, oh, we need to tout Chase Daniel. And it had no – like a 
ten percent chance. It was like a twenty four hour shelf life, is what you're saying. Yeah, if that. So not going to happen. Uh, we do get angry Tom this week, though. We get that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but he's an old guy. Like old guys tire themselves <laughs> out when they're mad. Like you got it. You got to figure he comes out in the first quarter really angry, but like then by halftime he's ready for like putting in a nap. Bro, the, the the problem with Angry Tom on DraftKings, it's such an easy stack because they priced all his receiving weapons like, way in down. That, yeah, in that low six k, high five k range, um, and he perfectly stacks with Mike Davis and then another bring back options from Carolina. I think that will probably be the highest on stack of the of the slate just because it's so so easy mm-hmm. to do. I'm going to throw another stack that might be high owned, and that's just because of the value of the receivers. Peter, you know who I'm talking about? I feel like you might say Carson Wentz? No. Mm-mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a, a hint, okay? All right. You see that behind and me? FanDuel NFL DFS lights. Blue Is that Come orange on. and blue? Yeah. Come on. You're going back to Drew Locke? No, he's going Jakeem. No. He's, he's going Jakeem. He's Grant. going to to a Jakeem Devante. Tua Jakeem Devante are so cheap this week. It is so easy. Like if you play them and Mike Davis together, it well, is a who you are wouldn't, you want? You wouldn't though. You wouldn't. The reason you'd be doing that would be to get off of the the like normative construction where everyone has one of those four quarterbacks I mentioned, then two of their wide receivers, then one bring back. But if you play Tua and Preston, or uh, Tua and, and Jakeem Grant and Devontae Parker, then you're talking about like being able to play Alvin Kamara and Devontae Adams in the same lineup or something like that. What uh, what happens when Kirk Merritt scores the two touchdowns, though? <laughs> I guess, I guess, I guess you just gotta. Well, I mean, Jakeem Grant can be in an optimal lineup with 11 points, so you probably don't tilt it that hard. That uh, also have Gesicki. Do, do you guys remember Merritt from? off-season show some guy mentioned him to us yeah that's he, the, the he's the dude freak. with the player profiler yeah. yeah oh so this is a guy i need to be he's touting the, then he's yeah. the freak freak like big time Kirk he's Merritt, part of the gam, the gam like squad. 99th percentile catch radius per score 93rd percentile speed score 96 40 yard dash wow i need to be uh i need to go make some moves in some of my dynasty leagues here <laughs> yeah this is this is i'll be back in, i'll be back in 10 minutes guys with my full attention <laughs> this, this is why you this is why you watch the swole cast in the off season because we tout kirk merritt quintus cephas over jonathan taylor all those nuts that pay off. Oh, yeah. tuttle tuttle very presciently noting that jonathan taylor's ass is so funny it happens. It's not funny because it happens every year. It's so obvious. The Badgers O line just kicks everybody else's ass. I, I literally think like Jonathan Taylor, like I literally think Jonathan Taylor, like might be worse than like Monty Ball. Monty and Ball, Gordon, though. Really? Monty Ball is so good. Dude, I'm this telling is you, Davis has just tried to one up with the hot take. Well, I, I, so I don't know if you guys read this this article. I don't even think it was an athletic article. I think it was free. But the the Indianapolis running backs coach, he said that. Frank Reich on their scripted plays gives him the right to send the running back in. So, you know, he can put out Naeem Hines. He can put out Wilkins. He can put out Taylor and six of Taylor's eight touches came on their first 15 scripted plays. Then Frank Reich takes over. And then after Frank Reich took over, it was all. Hines I thought it was the Wilkins. reverse. I thought it was the no, reverse. Uh-uh. Oh, okay. I didn't know Reich was the one that actually hated Jonathan. Taylor. Yeah, so Reich is the one being like, I want Jordan Wilkins in the game. And then I'm sure the running no, back no, coach. It's, it's the opposite. Reich yeah, scripts the, opposite. the first 15, and then the offensive coordinator gets to ride the hot hand. I read well, that now I gotta go. Now I gotta if, go. Look. If uh if you're watching the uh the swole cast on Friday, uh let us know what happened in the game the night before. Uh for this. Yes, let oh, us yeah, Thursday know. Night, <laughs> uh, for this awesome Jonathan I Taylor. Just David, we're a segment. week away from, from Davis going, dude, Jonathan Taylor's gonna be on the Dallas Renegades by this time next year. <laughs> Bro, I hope we get the XFL. COVID, COVID yeah. is taking away our XFL dreams. We're guys. gonna get XFL, right? I mean the rock it's swooped in. We're good. Yeah. Um, all right. <clears throat> so let's build a team on DK. Uh we still have the listener league. We got it up late. And uh, I think we had like maybe 10 spots left. But again, fanduel.com slash swolecast. We'll get you there. No rake. Top 10% to first. Top 20% gets paid. Uh, Men 2x cash. It's the best tournament out there. Three max. 
fanduel.com slash swellcast. Let's take, uh, let's go to draftkings.com and build a lineup. Peter, you look like you want to build something really. I can always tell when Peter, I can tell now that Peter's like standing up because like when he shifts, it's like, he's, he's really ready for something. <laughs> oh shit. My chair's underneath there. <laughs> Wouldn't go all the way down. Hope I didn't just break my standing desk doing a bit. Although that would be very on brand. <laughs> that would be very appropriate. Yeah. Um, there's your week. Charlie, there's your week 10 gift for next week. <laughs> Um, no, I was getting excited that you went to me first because I am going to pick DK Metcalf. Davis doesn't get oh, to God get all, damn the, it. all this the credit. Is so I know brutal, he wants dude. it. I is, I'm the one who counted DK Metcalf this week. Oh, you're such a glory hog, bro. I'm tilting. <laughs> you could play Lockett. Go for it, buddy. It's oh, just like, come Davis, on. I understand. Peter did to me the same thing last year with AJ Brown, if you remember, and he just had to one. I only I only recall positive AJ Brown takes from from Pete. I don't remember you really being that into him, Kitchen. You were more of a, a Janu guy. <sighs> no, I was. I think I, was I a, think you kind of I was were like an mad Titan guy. I think you were oh, kind of mad at AJ. You can't play Titans. <laughs> They're not going to do anything. <laughs> only ten passes a game. All right, DK Metcalf. Are we going to pair him with Russ? Let's go. Let's go goof here. Goof is on the loose. I just searched Goof into my DraftKings search. I think bar. I think Goof double stack. <laughs> I, yeah, oh, I yeah think we do, do need to. That is one of the pieces of feedback that we got. Is like you guys say all these random names and we don't know who you're talking about. Goof equals Jared Goff. Who else right. could Goof be? Actually, I did get another actual suggestion about that. People were asking, can we put the screen share of the lineup on there? Because people were like, I have no clue who you guys who are you putting have. in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's it's for cash games, so. <laughs> no, so yeah, cash. Games. All right, Just Jared Goff, DK Metcalf, Tuttle. Who you got? I mean, we got a. I think you double stack in this lineup, then. Yeah, Rob, Sir, Sir Robert of Trees. Trees and 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 Coop. Yeah. But it was Tuttle who got Woods in there, so Davis has yet to make a good brand pick for this uh, lineup. No, really I said, I him. said, no, I, I said, sir, I said, sir, Robert of trees. It literally does not get more on brand than that. <laughs> hey, Devin, uh, who are we attributing the woods pick to? I had it as Tuttle. Can we just get it confirmed? I, I mean, I'm cool with like the double taking the double stack here. Okay. Then it's my pick. So Jared Goff, Cooper cup, DK Metcalf, Robert Woods is what we have in. right. Okay. Now. I want, I want Chase Edmonds then. Kenny Drake's back at practice. Today, Why guys. would you, yeah, this is I think Davis by. Davis knows this, but he's still trying to mess with us just so he can say he called that it. That doesn't please. mean that doesn't mean he's gonna play for sure. I mean we, I mean America is used to getting gaslit. I'm surprised Davis didn't say just put Albert Owen. I don't even care if he's out for the season. <laughs> like, dude, it's still a punk. I actually <laughs> I actually have a really spicy tight end take for later and I'm saving it. But seriously, you and want to play actually the, All right, we'll go. The, give, given that it's Wednesday and we don't know yet, I will. I will come off of that one, and we can just go. Uh, Duke, Duke Davis. Johnson. We can go Duke Johnson. All right. Another one that might not be relevant. But... <laughs> no, we'll see how, DJ we'll see DJ how. is DJ is not going to play. It's Wednesday, and he hasn't even gotten past the first stage of the protocol yet. So I uh, we had somebody in YouTube chat. David told myself in in Overset to monitor this more carefully today. Somebody in, in YouTube chat asked, why double stack with Cooper Cup and Robert Woods? It's because they're, it's such a high concentration of targets in Los Angeles. Uh, Reynolds is going to mix in for a very tiny bit. Their tight ends are going to mix in for a very tiny bit. But if you have Goff going off for over 300 yards, it's probably Cooper Cup and Woods are topping 100 each. That like if, 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 they, if, if Goof drop back, drops back like 45 times, those guys each probably get – nine targets minimum each Tuttle, as the resident sharp do you subscribe to the um you like double stack is for smaller tournaments single stack is for larger tournaments i haven't heard that theory is that a i don't Blender i think HD that theory? sounds that, bad that sounds opposite no it? i uh, no it's definitely it's definitely a high stakes theory where like yeah smaller leone, tournaments, leone has stack. this theory i i agree with it let's hear the logic behind it So the logic is like in the super large field lottos, you're basically needing to hit an eight or nine leg parlay where you have to hit a ceiling at every position. And so every time Cooper cup scores a touchdown, 
it's probably unlikely that uh, Robert Woods Robert is Woods. actually racking up stuff. So yeah. just the one-offs have a better chance of hitting. And in the smaller field, you just want to be right about less things. So if you do the big game stacks and that game goes off, you can probably win without every piece of the game stack going nuclear. You're, you can That's get fair. 80th. You can get 80th percentile outcomes easier with a double stack, double bring back. But it's much much harder to get those 99th percentile outcomes in, you know, 30,000 person fields or whatever. Sure. The people, I love how Davis starts with "this sounds bad," and then he at I, the I end he I actually provides the reasoning. <laughs> I don't. I don't agree with it. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to make this fun and just play Mike Davis so that you guys can just have your have your way with whatever you want to do for tight end so, and flex. So this this team right here, I'll just guarantee this is going to be a dupe in like the 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 big spy or whatever. Like this this right here. Goff, Duke, Mike Davis, Metcalf, Woods, Cup. No, like dude. this, lock yeah. it, lock it's the bring back, dude. You're, you're right. <laughs> why do people? Why don't? Why won't people like appreciate Metcalf? Like, what's the deal? He was five percent last week. That was it's insane, man. All right, so Davis, you want to save your spicy tight end take, or do you want to use it now? Um, it doesn't. Well, it does fit with this team. It, and it is Mr. Jacob Hollister who Hollister. played. I knew I you were going to go Paul. Hollister. There it is. I knew you were going to go Hollister. I wrote it down too. Wow. I did too. I wrote it down right well, here. I wrote it down <laughs> first. <laughs> we just stopped the dupes from happening. happening. Yeah. Well, he had, he had seven targets last week. And my, my thought is that it actually wasn't random because Will Disley and Greg Olson have been two of the worst players in the NFL this year in terms of uh, yards per route run, targets per route run. They have they have bad blocking grades on PFF as well. It's like they're just low. They're just waste of space out there. And I think it was a, a concerted decision from the Seahawks coaching staff to play Hollister. Yeah. When you said spicy tight end take, I almost said it was at Hollister, but then it was going to be like the double double. It was going to be like the Tim Duncan of lineups, right? So now. we have um, so we have we have our double bring back then, and we can play whoever we ooh. want in the flex. I love the Hollister call. And we can dust off the picture, right, Tuttle, if it hits? Oh, let's go. That's oh, the best part. Baby. You just got me excited. You know what else gets <laughs> you know what else gets me excited? Yeah. Finishing this lineup with Aaron Jones and Packers D. Ooh. Ooh. That gets me excited. We got a we got a couple comments in the chat. This show gets worse by the week. Can't say I, I feel disagree. like we're having a, I think <laughs> yeah, we're having I a good I, show I, this week. I don't think we're doing terrible. We've had yeah. worse. I mean, I if guess... we can convince five more people a week to play DK Metcalf, we are literally doing our jobs. If I they if they watch I... last week, there's no chance they could think that this week was worse than last week. <laughs> you know what's funny to me? Like the people that want this show to be something different. What's the quote where it's like, you know, idiocy is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Idiocy is uh, watching the swole cast over and over and expecting uh, it to be different. Yeah, like they want quote us to is just insanity, not idiocy. Well, who's the idiot now? Like, I tuned into the Swole cast for the sixth week in a row, just hoping to get the picks, and then I complained on Twitter about them giggling too much. <laughs> like, there are people who, who, by the way, have watched this show for years and still are like, dude, that Matic kid is an idiot. It's like, spend your time doing something else. <laughs> uh, who's who's seen the show for years and, and doesn't say that? That's what I want to know. Um, well, also, point. we have 2,000 subs, and so there was a uh, interesting picture leaked on uh, Twitter.com slash Swolecast, and for those people that responded in a favorable way, you're welcome. That's all I have to say. Uh, it should, I so will hit, give you credit. That took a lot of courage to uh, to have that go live on the Why? Internet. Have you not seen the body issue ever? <laughs> we, need, we do need to Photoshop that on like an ESPN features the swole cast body issue <laughs> and you notice the angle it's all about the angles i had to lift the leg just to make sure that it, everything was still kind of pg so um anyway shout out to our, our guy ricky d for the uh, swag you guys will get some eventually all right uh let's move on to running back Tuttle, you mentioned aaron jones I'll just let you start it off. Let, uh, let, let's just assume that Mike Davis is a free square. We've already talked about it enough. No Mike Davis chat. Let's talk about the other options, starting with Aaron Jones. 
Well, the, the problem is the other options are kind of injury dependent too. Uh, we mentioned yeah. Duke Johnson is a little bit injury dependent. Nick Chubb was activated off of IR. Um, so him and Hunt, we need to yeah. fill out that situation a little bit before we know exactly what's going to happen there. Otherwise, on the high end, it's not all that great. Uh, you scroll through, I don't think you see any guys that you're just kind of locking into your lineups. I think there are guys that are good in good matchups, Aaron Jones being one of those. Um, he actually played a ton uh, when he was supposed to be limited or whatever the last Thursday night. I know he was out there on the fourth. I had I had some buddies in a group text saying, why is Aaron Jones out here in, in a blowout? Um, but yeah, Aaron Jones, really, really good matchup against Jacksonville. I do like the correlation with the Packers, D. I don't think people are going to pay up for them because they haven't been very good this they, year. They won't. I'll guarantee they won't. Yeah, they haven't been good this year. Um, and so and Lutton it. spun it a little bit last week, right? He got- and he looked agile. He had, he literally spun for a touchdown, Yeah, um, which was I mean, surprising. honestly, that first touchdown pass to DJ Shark, I like. I don't think Minshew would have made it. Like, Shark but- was open, but I don't think Minshew would have seen it. So no, well, and that's the thing with like DJ shark to get off track a little bit. Like he's, his opportunity didn't change at all with, with Luton under, under center is just that he actually caught they some were catchable balls. targets. Yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, running back, it's going to, again, like I said, depend a little bit on injury, but if we're looking high end Aaron Jones, do you think people will play James Connor after last week? No, I, if, no. You, they if, you, if you buy he's it dust. No, I think it was just kind of, I, I don't know. Can you explain Here's, it? What's here's the, my here's my opinion. James Conner was never good. Like if you even go back and look at the season he crushed, it's not like he had all these amazing runs and was breaking all these tackles. It was just they weren't using anyone else and he didn't get hurt and he didn't fumble. So and they were winning, so there was no reason to replace him. But now they have these you know they they like to give the ball in the wide receiver sweeps. The coaching staff really likes Benny Snell. I guess they spent the fourth round pick on McFarland. Like they're like basically James Conner is not playing so well that you have to keep him on the field or anything like that. And it's working to in, like mix in these other guys. So what's the point of giving James Conner all these touches? So Gretch actually had the, a really good take on this. They were running a ton of zero back sets. Yeah. So yeah. Ray Ray McLeod was out there and they had all, all the running backs on Pittsburgh only combined for a snap share of 65%. And, and McLeod was out there for 35% of those empty backfield snaps. So it, it seems like. And then McFarland a took a series as well. Yeah. I thought, because you know I was playing those flash drafts, I, I legit thought that uh, Connor was hurt, uh, like in the fourth quarter, because he wasn't coming out. And then he came out in the last series. Um, but so, I mean, that's kind of the point, though. If, if you think they're yeah. going to be playing with the lead, which everybody obviously thought last week, like Connor should be back in line for 15 yeah. to 20 touches. And it's a good matchup. All right. Well, let's talk about some what ifs let's talk about some what ifs you you mentioned it Tuttle so just really quickly you have to rank these situations as far as like let's just assume all the backups play although I think Justin Jackson will be back this week they're thinking about resting him but let's just assume that Dolphins Chargers Texans and Cards so so Duke Johnson Chase Edmonds um, and then Balaj if he goes and then Miami as well whoever you think it's going to be there Rank those situations, Davis. Chase Edmonds by 19 miles as number one. He would be a better play than Mike Davis for the money if Kenyon Drake is not able to play. Then Duke Johnson. Um, then Blage slash Kelly. Then Dolphins in last. I, I would anticipate no Dolphins running back scoring over 10 DraftKings points. Even if it's DeAndre Washington. You don't even have to touch those last two teams, I don't think. What's that? Those those last two teams are so much worse than the than the other. Yeah, two. it's like it's it's yeah. like I honestly, if Chase Edmonds is if if Kenyon Drake does not play, my running back pool in stuff this week might literally be Edmonds, Davis, Jones, and Duke Johnson. Zach like Moss. I literally, I, oh. I I no. How could you how could you seriously look at yourself and try and play a Buffalo running back after what they did last week? Like it would just be. It's Zach Moss's team. I tried telling you guys. No longer. Well, I mean, Peter. Peter. Peter told you that. 
Six no, I ago. told you that. I was the guy who told you that, Davis. <laughs> Don't you dare take that away from me. It's because me. I told Kitchen and then Kitchen told Davis. Yeah. So I, think so. like, I was the guy that drafted him in the offseason. Fake, fake super flex, mm. maybe super yeah. flex Jalen Hurts draft. All right. Hey God, Devin, As... Devin needs to kick someone out of the chat. There's this guy named Lil Baby who's posted the same trade question for redraft <laughs> about 400 times. We need to get kick Lil him Lil out. Baby. Kick Lil him out. Baby. Get him out of here. Little there baby, it goes. It's deleted. There we for, go. For the record, don't trade the big dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Peter, think, uh, speaking of taking credit for things, I'm going to ask it pretty much every week. Do DeAndre it. Swift. Yeah. It's um, it's really, really gross. Carrion Johnson and Adrian Peterson each had three catches last week. Carrion Johnson ran more routes than DeAndre Swift. It's like... It's so gross. He's by far the best player in that backfield. He's still getting a decent amount of touches. He had 13 carries. Uh, it's just so hard to trust him, but he's going to continue to be a really good GPP play. All right. Kamara or Jones for you, Peter? Uh, Kamara. On FanDuel, Jones. let's let's preface it. On FanDuel, Kamara or Jones? They're almost the same price. Um, in a vacuum, uh, what, it, what what's the ownership going to be on FanDuel? Tuttle? There's no, it's Wednesday. We don't have ownership yet. Nerd. That's how I make all my decisions. They're That's like so the quiet, same so play. Quiet. Who are you? Who are you asking about Pete? He's asking about Aaron Jones versus Kamara. I, I lean Aaron Jones now with Michael Thomas back in the lineup. I think he's going to steal a few of those check down targets from him. Half point PPR. It's not quite as valuable. Give me the home run swing with Aaron Jones. Slant boy is too cheap on DraftKings, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're almost a wide receiver total. So That's Michael play. Thomas, by the way. Yeah. Slant boy, got it. Um, <clears throat> Davis, Aaron Jones or Kamara? My guess is that we see more ownership on Kamara because so many people are going to want. I'm asking who you would like. Well, I can't answer without <laughs> knowing how many people are owning them. Like, that's the name of the game, bro. Game dungeon. Play whoever's lower <laughs> lower owned. That's the answer to your question. <laughs> You are tapping into your blender. I, 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 I will say though, on DraftKings, I prefer Kamara by quite a bit because I don't expect him to get owned there at all at eighty two hundred with people preferring to play Devontae Can, Adams. Uh, hands up. Yes. Can we, um, in this era of wokeness, can we say rostered instead of owned? <laughs> all right. Uh, Stephen B says duke revenge game i did not even think about this it's wednesday so i haven't even thought about revenge narratives <laughs> but you're mad at us for for not thinking about the ownership this early in the week but you're you're on top of the narratives here i mean come on no i'm saying i didn't even think about it so but i'm not asking about it either but duke johnson against his old team cleveland absolutely <laughs> all right um let's talk about wide receivers we didn't even talk about Miles Sanders, but he he does seem like the secret like fancy play where like n- like nobody nobody plays him. Like he's not going to get touted early in the week. He is going to look okay in optimizers, but he's not going to be like an insane value or anything. Aren't these guys coming off of injury just repeatedly the best play? Dalvin C- Cook two weeks ago, Christian McCaffrey. You're getting this discount on these guys because everyone wants to prove it week. But if the team is activating them, they're good to go. I, I like the Miles Sanders call. Okay. He is somebody that uh, I, I looked at price wise. I think. Uh, oh, did, we didn't talk about JD McKissick, did we? Mm, did we? Didn't. And his no. fourteen I will, targets I, last I week. I will not. I will not debase myself with with such shenanigans. You you realize uh, Antonio Gibson missed practice today too, right? Yeah, they downgraded dude, him to uh, questionable. Dude, it, Reeves Reeves tweeted this the other day, and it literally blew my mind. Like I was like, this is the most absurd shit. He has one third down touch. One. Antonio Gibson. It is crazy. Converted wide receiver. <laughs> I yeah, forget, the guy I had like who 20 was... snaps at running back. <laughs> yeah. Converted, Whoever converted replied wide to receiver like, who well, they, they turned into yeah. Adrian Peterson. Like That's like a good thing, at least, that they look at him as a running back now, at least. But, yeah, you can do it. McKissick, All right. McKissick, yes. You can play him, especially on PPR sites. Yeah. 
That's legit. No more free ads for DraftKings, but you can play them on PPR sites. <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember when there used to be like 10, this is again, this is like 16 years ago in DFS years, but like there used to be so many sites that people would say like stuff like priced around the industry or like on half. I still PPR. say that. Shit, no, they say half so point PPR sites. Yeah. Half because, half because, because there that. were like, there were like actually enough sites that people were playing on. Like you had to make sure that fantasy up and daily joust got their, their due. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make sure you get too. those advertising dollars. All right. Jakeem Grant, yes or no, Peter? He's fine. He's fine. Uh, I mean, the same thing with all these pump play wide receivers. We see it each week where it's just like, don't play the chalky one. Uh, we've seen in past weeks like David Moore and Gabriel Davis be cheap punt guys that weren't owned that end up getting there and all the ownership concentrates bizarrely on a guy like Marcus Johnson. And you're like, why is Marcus Johnson any different? than these other guys. So if Jakeem Grant catches a bunch of ownership, nah wave. If not, knock yourself out. Do you think they can do something where Jakeem Grant's not on the field a bunch? Yes, very easily. They play they play the tight they play the tight ends. They give Malcolm Perry some snaps. They give Mac Holland some snaps. They give Antonio Callaway 10 snaps. They give Kirk Merritt five because they play Durham Smythe and Adam Shaheen so much. And then Gasicki plays like 80% of the snaps all in the slot. It's very easy to see Jakeem Grant running 18 routes on 32 snaps. And it's, it's like very easy to see. Yeah, How many people get triggered sense. every week whenever a – Dolphins tight end, not named Gesicki, scores a touchdown. You think it's him at first, and then you realize it's not. Oh, I get tri- I get triggered every time. And the thing is, is like Gesicki is best friends with Smite. They're all just like such bros. Yeah, they're and, bro. Uh, they're all hard. happy for each other, and we're like, no, dude, we need Gesicki getting ten targets a game. <laughs> well, Peter, Peter, and I have had this this year long battle against Pat Corain on like the the just the intrinsic value of Gesicki in the NFL, and so. It's really, it's really a, a knife to the gut every time the Durham Smite scores. There feels like there's so many wide receivers this week. Tuttle, talk to me about four wide receiver lineups. Um, out the door if we get like the Chase Edmonds comes through. It, it's out the door if we get injuries working in the favor where we're going to get chalkier running backs because we already said Mike Davis is locking up one of those spots, and then Chase Edmonds could very well lock up another one of those spots. Um. But if we don't get all that, then yeah, I could see it. I could see. Um, there's just a lot receivers. of market share wide receivers out there. So you're going to well, have to choose. They're all higher price is the thing though, too. Um, I already mentioned slant boys a little bit underpriced at 7,400. Um, he'll probably creep back up. Tyler Lockett's down at 6,500. Cardi, Cardi is already preparing a thread for this Michael Thomas price. Like he's ready. He's ready to, to come. Oh, it's a dome to, too. I didn't realize. Dome? It's dome. Oh, it's dome. Yeah. He's ready to defend slant boys <laughs> honor for sure. Yep, it's dome. Um, has this like booster in his blitz back end where it's just like 26% premium boost if it's in the dome for Michael Thomas. It's just going whoop. I, did you ever think you would see a day that Michael Thomas was less expensive than DK Metcalf on DraftKings.com? Nope. Pretty wild. All right, so who's, who's your top wide receiver this week, Dan? There's only one Top answer. overall? Yeah. I mean, we don't care about price. It's Devonte. Okay. He's not even hard to fit this week. I know. Like, you can fit him in, especially if you play Jakeem Grant or a 3K wide receiver. And Mike Davis, obviously. What's the DeAndre Hopkins take is the is the interesting question. He's 7,700 he, he, on DK. I, I would not be surprised to see DeAndre Hopkins in – single entry in three max contest with like 2% ownership, honestly. For Davius White, dude, he's going to shut Oh my down. God. <laughs> I got it, dude. People got to stop with the Tredavious uh, White. Like DK Metcalf put him in an absolute body bag. Didn't that for people not watching? I have to look, I have to look this up now. Now I want to see. Uh... Uh, in, this is in... where Tuttle's segment where he does PFF cover grades. Yeah, I want, <laughs> I want, well, no, I want to see the coverage, the actual coverage on. Uh, he got, it... he had five for 60 against in Tredavious White's coverage, I think. Uh, he was targeted five times. He caught three balls for 65 yards. Trey had a Davis. A, one was for an interception. One of the targets went for an interception. I mean, Davis, Russell do you was, know Russell how Wilson expensive throwing interceptions to everybody? Davis, do you know how expensive Devontae Adams is on FanDuel? Uh, no, I don't, honestly. I haven't built my FanDuel shell yet. He's 9,500. Yeah, people won't play him there. 
Cause, have cause, we seen a have we seen a wide receiver up near maybe slant, maybe slant, Michael Thomas last year? Slant boy was ninety one hundred dollars week one this year. I know because I played him. Ninety five hundred. It's yeah. But, but I mean, still, literally, you can still play him if you want. Literally, to. how do you fade this guy? Like Devontae Adams is putting up like Randy Mossy in numbers every week. And when you watch, and like the the crazy thing is, is you'd expect to go watch the game and be like, oh, he must just be looking like you know just put these in crazy feats of athleticism that are not repeatable. But no, it's literally just like pitch and catch. It's like my, Devontae Adams wide open catches the ball, gains ten more yards. All his touchdowns are like they look easier than goal line carries. It's like looks like the most insanely repeatable stuff ever. McLaren, Cooper Cup, or Keenan Allen on DK. You gotta choose one. Who is it? Stefan Diggs. <laughs> Diggs is the but Patrick the Peterson, alpha. dude. <laughs> Diggs is the alpha for sure. Hold up. I, um, I got a new bit. I'm going to pull up the PFF wide receiver cornerback matchup sheet. And then every time someone mentions a wide receiver, I'm going to be like, are you worried about the matchup? What's going to be hard is you reading their name and trying to pronounce it for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Is it updated yet on a Wednesday? All right. So let's talk yes. about some of these other guys. All right. Top matchup of the week is Terry. Top McLaren. matchup of. Oh, aren't you worried F1. about Desmond Trufant though? You know, I, I know that <laughs> I know that you know he looks bad right now, but Desmond Trufant, that's an all-pro corner. You know, he has made Pro Bowls. Aren't you a little worried about that individual coverage against Des? You know, maybe he goes into the fountain of youth and he finds you know some form. I think you just got to hope he kicks into the slot and escapes his coverage for a few snaps, man. <laughs> what about Cooper? Are we going Cup shadow DJ, or are we DJ Reed? All right. <laughs> oh man, okay. I mean these these Seattle defensive backs, bro. They lick taint it's like anyone can get there against them Gosh, you're so immature david davis is dis- david's be disgusted. a professional for once <laughs> all right is terry mclaurin gonna lick the coverage is the oh is the question <laughs> Remember when we were talking about a one show suspension? I think Davis is getting hit with one. Davis, don't worry. Week 11 probably is going to suck anyways. You'll be be missed. Fun. Let's keep going, but they're wide receivers. This is my new favorite bit. Uh, Okay, so you have to pick a Carolina receiver. Who is it? DJ Moore. So I agree that DJ Moore is is a great play, and I will be playing him this week. But if I may offer some leverage thoughts... Curtis, Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel does <laughs> seem alpha. like, well, yeah, I mean, shit, but he does seem like he does seem like the guy who could get some of those short yardage touchdowns. That if he does, like, if Curtis Samuel gets twenty six DraftKings points, you can pretty much lock in that Mike Davis had a bad game. Here's the thing: when they drafted Curtis Samuel, this is exactly what they wanted to do with him. Is use him all over yeah the, the best running back in the in the panthers backfield without christian mccaffrey is curtis samuel not mike davis there's your leverage Dude, curtis play. samuel backfield snaps injected into my veins <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, FF, 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 Dyn- <laughs> ff dynasty guy pete <laughs> hey uh remember when davis tried to bet me josh dotson versus Devonte parker that was and it, and, it, and it was like within like six PPR points at the end it of the year. It was not. Stop. Hey, uh, uh, Devontae, De, Devontae Parker, yay or nay? I don't know, yeah. man. Aren't you worried about Casey Hayward Jr.? We're talking about a former <laughs> Pro Bowl corner here. We're talking about a guy He's who's on the Vanderbilt. top of his game. Yeah, <laughs> Casey Hayward Jr. is a very good quarterback. I don't know. I'm a little worried about that coverage on Devontae Parker. It's a, it's yeah, a we should physical matchup. We should look at the bottom matchups now. DJ Chark okay. versus Jair Alexander. Oh, I guarantee there's someone on Twitter right now. Literally, 100%. we could search we could search Jair Alexander and someone would be like, everyone's very excited about DJ Shark's target share from last week, but let's remember he's going to be covered by Jair Alexander this week who's done a historically great job eliminating f- opposing boundary wide receivers. You Here's sound like Mel of Kiper. Jair Alexander eating cereal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, DJ Moore has the, uh, the worst matchup based on this chart. Uh... Looks like, like Christian Kirk has a bad 
wide receiver cornerback matchup. I don't think people people don't care about the ones in the middle. Well, they only care about they only care about um you know the, yeah, the, the, the real yeah the extremes. Can we rewind it a little bit? A guy who was going to be just like a jam him in play last week, uh, then gets put on the COVID list. Well, jam him in for season long teams, I should say. Um, Brandon Ayuk. What everyone's talking ever about him. Jam him in for your season long. Got to jam him in. Hey, 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 he was a hey, must are, play. It was a big, big pickup. Go ahead. Dave. Aren't, oh aren't you worried about Marshawn Lattimore in coverage <laughs> against Brandon Ayuk? <laughs> That's what I was wondering is that he's 5.7K. <laughs> Jerry I, Rice said he's like a future Hall of Famer. I mean, look, I don't know what else you want to say about this guy. Debo Samuel is going to be limited if he comes back. They don't have a lot of options there without Kittle. Look, if I'm if I'm the New Orleans Saints, I'm putting my best corner, Marshawn Lattimore, on none other than Rich than Richie James Jr., bro. Oh, not, David's hey. just running it into the ground. Yeah, I was just going to say, David, just spread him out a little <laughs> just, bit. Next day, it's, well, it's so entertaining to me. Like, this is the most fun I've ever had. Because you know, this is what some people do when they do DFS shows is they pull up this matchup chart and they're literally like, I don't know, can't play him, Jair Alexander. Well, well, most shows can't just giggle the whole time, so they actually have to <laughs> yeah. find something else to talk about. Oh, hey, um, Anthony Anthony Don said Richie James week, question mark. You look good last week, man. Yeah. I want uh, yeah, I want Davis's yards. take on Jalen Rager before we, before we move oh, on. I mean, this is an all-time spot, like – I, I I think he's borderline cash playable, but probably you just end up playing whatever 3K guy instead. How, but how many snaps did he get last week? Played the or how game. many targets did he get? Six plus a rush. Wait, Davis, seriously? Don't you think James Bradbury's gonna fall around <laughs> the formation? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, dude, James Bradbury Bradbury's, will go full he's gotta go, he's gotta go Fulgham, dude. You can't stop the Fulgham explosion. Uh, All right. Uh, anyone want to? Anyone want to hop on uh, Jerry Judy before we move on? We got to move on. Air yards extraordinaire. Target extraordinaire. Hey guys, did you see? Whenever he ran that route, he put his hand up like it was a go route, and then came back and caught the ball and scored a touchdown. Disingenuous wide receiver right next, there. Next level. Okay. Um, let's that go was to definitely FanDuel. that was definitely like a CSU Ram, like he did, like the the uh, what's the 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 artichoke. You're emoji. almost there. Not the 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 eggplant emoji. <laughs> You're almost there. There the you go. Artichoke <laughs> emoji. <laughs> Lick taint. Hashtag artichoke emoji. Rocket. There was an artichoke. You guys remember? Uh, <laughs> who was it with the? No, was it artichokes? Oh man, Matt Harmon. What was his thing? Was oh, it Arnold Brussels Chokes? sprouts? Brussels Brussels sprouts. Yeah. He like he had the, the Davis. This is what happens when like a bit goes bad. He got so sick of people tweeting at him about Brussels sprouts that he asked people to not tweet at him anymore about Brussels sprouts. That's what you're doing right now with the matchup stuff. We got we have people in chat mad about the jokes. They don't like the jokey jokes. Is this they your dad, to- Big D? Little D, <laughs> big D. D. <laughs> Maybe they want they want more serious wide receiver quarterback analysis. Coming from a guy that names himself Big D. All right, big artichoke what? is what I call him. <laughs> do we build a fan? Yeah, is yeah that what fan we do on this Come show on. now. Yeah, or artichoke emoji. I'm still trying to think of what that even would look like. <laughs> I don't even know what to, what we would want it to look like. Oh. All right, um, let's start. Peter, you did a good job last time going first. Let's have you go first again. Ooh, who can I cuck Davis on this time? <laughs> let's do it. Let's put in uh let's put in Brandon Ayuk on this one. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I literally will probably play Richie James in one FanDuel or in one DraftKings.com lineup, though. Just want to put that out there permanently on the record. Awesome. All right, Tuttle. Um let us bring it back with Slant Boy. Michael Thomas is uh, Slant Boy. Oh, come on. Do we can, can we just do Metcalf? What? They're not mutually exclusive. <clears throat> All right. And then I'm going to go and uh, and put in Devontae Parker. Oh, I hate it. No, put in Metcalf. We'll roll out four wide receivers. Who cares? You yeah, Davis, don't be, hey, don't be such a little beta boy. Thanks. I hate it. 
Why do you hate it? These are three sick wide receivers. Wait, who did you um, just pick? I'm reading that Big D's name is actually Dal, and if I don't like it, that's fine. Um, Brandon Ayuk, Michael Thomas, Devontae Parker, and then Davis. Did you want to go Metcalf? No, I don't want to. I don't want to okay. ruin All right, the well, structural pick integrity here. Pick somebody, well, Davis. We don't even have any good QB stacks either. This is a night. This is not a good team already. Davis complaining. You were the one is, that said you is. don't want a double stack, so you know we can. Get that it. is inaccurate. We've, we've got tight ends still. <laughs> yeah, we could still stack the tight end. I, I will agree with Davis. This is we picked like the three worst quarterbacks to pass. Yeah, with. like it's it's all bad. Um, I guess we should. We haven't had this conversation yet, so I'm going to pick him for the sake of conversation. Uh, Giovanni Bernard, 6200. Joe Mixon has not yet returned to practice. They just came off their bye week. Didn't, no Wednesday didn't practice, he practice for Joe today? Mixon. He did not. He didn't practice. Or wasn't today. he going to return to practice today? He was supposed but he to, didn't, but he didn't. Though. Got what it. was his... Uh, it said he was limited at practice. No, what was Gio's week eight usage? Though I remember tilting uh, a way too much P- P- Ryan. He scored twice, so... So let's let's know. not do Geo then, Davis, uh, because we don't know yet. Let, yeah, can it was you pick a fifteen else? ten run split between the two. All right, well let's go let's go Duke then. That's fine, whatever. I mean, I just I'm all, it's, this team sucks, bro. I don't care. It, it kind of does. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. So, these I mean, are play, literally play un, these are these are unstackable options. I don't I don't see the issue. Let's go. Yeah, let's get creative. Trying to look for tight ends that we could. Yeah, what's the good? Our... What's what's the good tight end stack? I guess it would be Brady and Gronk. That would be your. Ew. Gronk didn't practice today either. Just FYI. That's a that veteran a, rest yeah, day. Yeah, that's bad. Mm. They probably had to bail Antonio Brown out of jail. It's a, it's a tough scene. I mean, Hunter Henry runs routes. We can... No, I'm absolutely. I've, I got Wiggins and TJ in my ear every week about Hunter Henry. I know I'm they want to play. Let's go. Uh, let's, okay, I'm, let's I'm, go Tua. Let's go yes, Tua. I'm, I'm going Tua Hunter yeah. Henry. Yeah, I'm doing it. I like let's it. Let's do it. Look at this. Tuttle comes through and redeems this lineup. Yeah, Davis is just complaining, and Tuttle comes with solutions. You know, Davis, the definition of complaining is doing something twice <laughs> over. Again. The definition of an artichoke <laughs> is eating it over and over and expecting uh, it to someone be an did, Someone talked about Goddard. We'll talk about him in a second um, when we talk about tight ends. All right, so we, we have a running back, a flex, and we have uh, plenty of salary. So, um, Play Peter, whoever who you like? want. Um, let's see here. So should we just jam... Should we jam the, the Eagles. grown man? No, let's the grown uh, man. no, let's double du- let's uh double up on Aaron Jones here. I know I was I was trying to jam Kamara too, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense with uh with MT, yeah. With Michael Thomas in there. All right, so if we did that, we got if you went like cheap under 4k, you got 82 or 83 left. I mean, and we, we can, can play DK. we can DK. we can play the DK. grown man. There let's we go. As Dave Davis is happy now. Yeah, everyone's no, happy. Big D's happy. We made a lineup. <laughs> Davis is play, happy. We got Metcalf. Play it in cash. You can also go Diggs if you wanted to. Lots of uh, lots of receivers. You got tons of options there at that two v two though. Choose correctly. All right, let's talk about tight ends. Someone mentioned Goddard. We've got Evan Ingram. Um, lots of people thanking me for the Evan Ingram call last week. You're welcome. Really? Many Where, people um, are saying it. More and more people are saying it all the time that Kitchen yeah. called Evan Ingram. Yeah. Where were you getting so, thanked, Davis? Can you or can you link us to this after the show, Dave? Yeah. No, like I don't. Yeah. I don't share all my DMs. <laughs> I don't share all my direct messages. Like they're private. But uh, yeah, I'll link you some. Uh, so Evan Ingram, and then no Albert O. Davis. I know it's like it's like I wake up and it's like my my purpose. Forget for, Slant know, Boy. Could we have Fant Boy? Yeah, I mean the the problem is is Noah Fant now. It's like he's hurt this ankle three separate times. He rolls it. He misses a game. They have the bye week. He comes back. He hurts it again. Comes back against Atlanta. Hurts it on his first play. Um, you know, or his first reception, and then finds a way to play through the game. But it's like I I want it to be Noah Fant. I want it to be Fant season. But I am a I am a smidge worried that he just keeps banging himself up. All right, I will obviously, say, Davis. Are you? Re- I I feel like it's it was nice of Alberto 
to withdraw himself from the season and save you from further disingenuous touting? I mean, he just kept scoring <laughs> touchdowns, bro. It's like he was a touchdown <laughs> machine. What target a game? One Davis target a game in the end zone. One second to shed a tear for Albert O, and then now he's on to Jacob Hollister. Literally one second. I sent a tweet. I got I got some likes, and it was on to the next gimmick. Uh, Jacob Hollister is very cheap. And, As he should uh, be, because he might get zero targets. Yeah. <laughs> they want to involve him. They wanted to involve him more after the uh, the bye week. Was that the narrative? No, just that Disley and Olsen have been so bad. Like they're terrible. So, and they like ran a couple screens to him and stuff last week. Like it looked like things that were, but then again, you know, Pete Carroll, like they do very game plan specific stuff all the time. So I don't know. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about some other cheap tight ends. We mentioned Dallas Goddard coming back. Oh, Austin yeah. Hooper as well without Odell. Tuttle, who do you like as far as some of these cheap tight ends? I like both those guys quite a bit. Um, we mentioned Hooper's potential increase in target share with Odell sideline. And then I also think people will forget Goddard and like, the market share he actually has, especially with Zach Ertz sidelined with this team. Like this was a purely tight end targeting team early in the season and last season and last season as well. Um, you can probably get, you know, seven to 10 targets out of Goddard in this spot. And he's cheap. He's 4,200 on DraftKings, 5,800, I believe on FanDuel. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do. I do like Goddard quite a bit. You got to pick between one of them, Peter, who is it? Logan Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Six targets played a hundred. Hundred percent of the snaps. Uh, I'm with it's, Pete. It's so gross, but uh, I don't mind. I, I like Goddard too. I, I think he's a good play. So, can I actually offer a little bit of Goddard uh, pessimism? Sure. Who's linebacker? <laughs> oh, yeah, what's it. the linebacker match? Uh, uh, <laughs> Nigel Bradham is a bad matchup. <laughs> um, no, it's that Dallas. The, the entire time that Dallas Goddard's been a member of the Eagles they've never had one good wide receiver, right? The best wide receiver Dallas Goddard's ever played along with has been fat Sean Jeffrey, right? Like, like late career Alshon Jeffrey. Now they have Fulgham. Now they have Rager. It's not going to surprise me if Goddard is mostly a wind sprinter um, for the rest of this year. Like I, like I, I do actually think that Rager and Fulgham probably earn 45% or more of the targets for the Eagles offense the rest of the way. But we've seen two wide receivers in this offense with Ertz, eating like why, why can't those three all command a decent amount of target share so so i guess my thing would be i don't think goddard like i know we all liked goddard but i like i think that maybe he doesn't command quite as much of a target share as Ertz. and so well but he still probably projects for like 18 percent, which is fine but i like i just i won't i don't think that he has that same ability as Ertz to be like, go out there and be like, I'm going to go get 12 targets because Wentz just is going to throw it to me all that many times. Like I would anticipate. Oh, he was kind of the alpha earlier. Davis, with, even with Davis Ertz. playing devil's advocate, like in the same breath in the same sentence. I'm just thinking it through, man. All right. I get you. It's the first show of the week. Well, um, I, want, I, would I say, want, I would say this, you've got a, you've got a track record for these other guys. I agree. Dallas Goddard. There is like a bunch of risk with him. Like I know we joke about Evan Ingram, but he's he's had what three straight games of ten targets. You've got uh, Austin Hooper had five catches his past three games. He's, he's not even like hurt. He just had his uh, appendix Wait, taken out. Why why are we saying there's risk with Dallas Goddard? I don't think there's because a ton of, of risk. Targets. Like I don't like I don't think he's going to go to like two targets. Like I think he'll get six kind of as a floor. But it's just that I don't know if I don't know if those upper percentile outcomes are as accessible to him with Fulgham and Rager. Tuttle, who do you project the three highest owned tight ends on this slate on DraftKings to be? I don't even know if we have that posted yet. Um, it probably is in this range though. Hooper. No, it's, it's Waller, Goddard, and Fanner Hooper. But Waller no, and Goddard I think, Ho- sure. I think Hooper will be. I haven't looked at lineup construction enough to know, do we have the money to go to Waller? Well, not if you're not if you're spending up at not if you play Adams not if you play Adams I think Waller will catch a decent amount of ownership just because people aren't going to be in love with any of these like high threes low fours guys yeah it probably is Waller Hooper 
And probably then Goddard yeah. or Fant, I would say, after that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it'll depend on the Fant uh, practice reports because he's been limited coming off that injury. I would say That's Waller, Hooper, Goddard at this point. Yeah. Man, if Ingram's not, if Ingram and Logan Thomas are in there, I'll probably. probably People don't play Logan Thomas. Thomas. People, like literally Logan Thomas has never had a game this year with less than four targets. He's never played less than 75% of the snaps. He's out there every play, basically, and people don't play him because well, he was chalked you know I mean? the one week. He was like really, bad, really low, yeah, and bad. Yeah, I'll throw out one more guy who will get lost because he's just priced up a little too high for you to feel comfortable about it. But TJ Hawkinson, ten targets two weeks yeah, ago, eight targets last week. I, I mean, his role is is pretty good now. Uh, can I get a year two breakout uh, tight end from you? Can I get a year two breakout? <laughs> Yes, you can. Uh, okay. All right. Um, special thanks to everyone that has been in the chat uh, arguing amongst themselves. Um, the best comment was from Big D that says, that's not true. These guys are told what to say. It's scripted. <laughs> you imagine? Imagine, <laughs> imagine, if, imagine if licking taint was on a script somewhere. Oh, hey, yeah, my, my teleprompter is actually just <laughs> malfunctioning there. <laughs> Oh, All right, Dale. final uh, closing thoughts, Peter. Shout out to Big D in the chat. Shout out to the guy who was wondering if he should Big trade D is for Jeff Derek Jones. <laughs> is Big D Jeff Jones? <laughs> Jeff, where's my wig phone when you need it? Um, <laughs> it's going to be a good week. Have fun out there. Tell your parents you love them. Hydrate. Hydrate. And wor- hang on. There's one thing. There's a lot of talk that goes on in the DFS community. There's a lot of things. It's what's actionable, what's not, how do I win? The number one thing you can do to boost your ROI is to pour over the cornerback matchups when you are setting your DFS <laughs> you, go. you found it. You found it. Very nice. Uh, Davis, closing thoughts. I feel like Pete stole my bits a little bit this week. No, getting the Metcalf you, first. You had a nice proof of concept, and I just had to bring him on home for you, Davis. Yeah, I, hey, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, you know, as always, uh, make sure to to play more DK Metcalf than your opponents. That's that's the first step to being profitable in daily fantasy sports. And uh, you know, just make sure that you're getting in your Josh Allen double stacks, John Brown, Steph Diggs. Make sure you're getting in your Kyler Murray double stacks, DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, Chase Edmonds. Make sure that you are getting in your goof double say, stacks. And say a, a healthy dose of artichoke in your diet. And a healthy <laughs> a healthy dose of Sir Robert of Trees in your lineups. And uh, and you will you will grow long and prosper. You're so close there. Uh, you're so we'll, close. We'll, you'll grow long you grow and prosper. Long. <laughs> All right, uh, Davis, someone did want to know our master's pick, so I'll just let you speak for the, the group. Who's going to win? Bryson wins by three strokes. Patrick Cantlay and Adam Scott, both T5 this event. Uh, Bryson pick, real original. You must be playing Mike Davis in all your GPPs this week. Dude, he saw hey, golf. Hey, man, some of us have been buying Bryson uh, ma- majors tickets since January. Only some of Tuttle, us. Tuttle, uh, did you have a terrible take for us? Yeah, this one is inspired by the uh, cornerback wide receiver matchup that uh, mm-hmm. DJ Shark will be facing with Jair yeah. Alexander. It's all those targets are going to funnel to Chris Conley, obviously. <laughs> Chris Conley, terrible take. I like it. Chris Conley. All right, there you go. Uh, well, that will do it for the Swolecast. If you want to hit the – listen, we got a tent pole event coming up, and that is uh, the Thanksgiving show, so we might be able to do two <laughs> shows that week. Uh, if we get to a certain number of subscribers, so hit the like button. It helps us out. Hit the subscribe button. I don't know why you would other than it helps us out. Uh, but thanks to Davis. Thanks to uh, Peter and Dan. And thanks our producer, Devin, for for telling us what to do, telling us what to say every week. He, the brain's behind the operation. So we appreciate him. And uh, happy Veterans Day. Good luck in week 10. And we'll see you next week here on the Swolecast on RotoGrinders.com.